Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, which is sponsored by Bluebyte. They're experts at connecting technologies. And today's webinar is all about how you can transform your wine label into a consumer communications gateway, which will allow you to collect valuable data, build consumer relationships and increase your sales. With us, we also have Emma Brown from the Brown Family Wine Group. She has extensive experience using packaging technologies to engage with consumers and build wine brands. Now, before we get started, there are a few technical details. This webinar is pre-recorded. However, the speakers are available in the live chat. So if you have any questions along the way, just pop them into the live chat over here and they'll answer them as we move along. Now, without further ado, let me pass it over to Rachel to get us started. Thank you, Kim. Hello, my name is Rachel Gray. I'm a connected product advisor here at Bluebyte. We have been the world's leading connected products platform since 2007. What I do for the brand is I work with brands like yours to really define and execute their connected product strategies. Here at Bluebyte, we really recognize the importance of understanding how consumers are interacting with physical products through connecting technology. And when I talk about connecting technology, I'm gonna to refer to it much throughout this presentation. I'm talking about QR codes or NFC tags. By doing this and understanding how these interactions are happening, we can really provide brands with a stronger connection with their consumers through this technology. Um, in the most engaging and relevant way. Now, we've been working with the wine industry for quite a while, and we know that when it comes to marketing, you guys have some unique challenges. According to a wine market survey, we can see that 36% of US consumers said they were confused by wine labels. Another 75% said that even when they actually like a wine, they can't even remember its name. Of course, in a perfect world, we don't want this to happen at all. We want for your wine labels to really engage your consumers, describe what's in the bottle, and get them to actually make a pur purchase. Now, don't you wish that your label could do this? Today, we're gonna discuss how exactly you can use connecting technology to do all of this without having to print larger labels, without having to change your design or print additional materials. So let's really get into connected products. Connected products has actually become a valuable sales and communication channel that cuts through all of the digital noise in 2023. There's always an email that needs answering. I'm sure your inbox is full right now. A text message that's blowing up your phone or some pop-up that is really trying to get your attention. Connecting technology can cut through all of that digital noise and is actually being controlled by the brands themselves. Here at Blue Byte, what we do is empower brands to open up this channel with a simple scan of a QR code or NFC tag, we help you to deliver the right message at the right time to consumers. Now here today, we're going to explore how to use connecting technology to add value for your consumers, strengthen your consumer relationship, and elevate the long-term engagement. So not only engaging them at the point of sale, but throughout the product life cycle. And finally, really increasing sales as well. Another area of exploration is being able to understand how as a brand you can benefit from getting access to the data that is um, available through connecting technology. Now we talked about all that digital noise, right? Those emails that need answering, the text message that are popping up on your phone um, and all of that noise. Uh, so we're being constantly bombarded by this. How exactly as a brand are you able to compete with all of this noise and really engage your consumer 
and connect with them with a long lasting relationship. You're gonna to have to become one of the most innovative brands in the industry, staying ahead of the curve. What you're going to have to do is really meet consumers' demands. They're demanding transparency, sustainability, and an emphasis on the D2C movement is happening right now. You're also going to want to improve your in-store performance. So perhaps you only have a few sales associates and they're not as well educated on your wines, right? So you're going to want a way to really be able to tell your unique brand story and capture how exactly consumers are interacting with your products on the shelves and once they take them home. You've also created so much work kind of curating your brand messaging. So you want to protect that in a brand controlled way to deliver that information to consumers. You also want to ensure that consumers feel comfortable purchasing your wine. They feel like this is an authenticated product that is coming directly from the brand. Now, I hear all of these goals quite often from my brand leaders that I talk to. And all of these needs are actually what's driving the connected products evolution. Connecting technology can transform your wine label into a distinct and unique two-way communication channel where every single need that we went through in the previous slide are actually met. But it's important to note that not every connected product is the same. So simply redirecting to a static landing page or maybe your website isn't going to cut through all that digital noise that we talked through before, right? You're going to need to engage your consumers in a way that surprises and delights them. The statistics really tell the story, of course. We know that there has been rapid growth with connected products, specifically a thousand percent growth between 2018 and 2021. And this is, of course, because consumers are becoming more accustomed to interacting with connected technology. I know on a day to day basis, I'm probably scanning more than one QR code, right? Um, you're also tapping NFC tags as well. This has become a daily occurrence. We actually did our own study in 2022 on consumer trends. And what we found was 57% of consumers are more likely to buy a product if they've learned more about it by connecting with the packaging. Of those individuals, 64% said, they would be more likely to buy wine and spirits, so your industry, if they learned about it through the packaging. Some more specific data for you um, to see here is 53% of respondents said that they would like to learn more about wine and spirits through QR or NFC. And half of those said that they think it would be useful to actually validate the bottle's authenticity through connecting technology. As you can see here, the market is definitely ready for connected technology. Using this methodology, you can address your consumer's demand and need for information and connection. And you can do this in a scalable and sustainable way. No longer necessary to print endless marketing materials, hoping that you've personalized them enough for them to land with the right consumer you can actually create and deliver personalized mobile experiences, then update and change the messaging in real time throughout the entirety of the product's life cycle. Now it's time to really take a look at, the, look at these opportunities in action. I'd like to introduce Emma Brown. Um, she is the group marketing manager for Brown Family Wine Group located in Australia. And previously, Emma was the brand director at 19 Crimes. Thank you so much, Emma, for coming on and sharing with us today. Thank you so much for having me today, Rachel. And hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, so what we talked about before was 
that 75% of consumers, they really can't recall the name of a wine, even that they actually liked, right? So I know that when you were with 19 Crimes, all the way back in 2017, I believe, um, it was widely recognized that you kind of put connecting technology on the map, uh, especially um, in the wine and spirits industry. Can you tell us somewhat about that project and how it kind of came to be? Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, um, we, we're in such a beautiful category, the wine category, but it is overly convoluted. Um, we're really lucky that if every bottle of wine has an incredible story to tell, whether it's about the terroir, whether it's about the winemaking process, whether it's about the brand and the history. But it's incredibly hard to tell those stories in a really succinct and engaging way with consumers. Um, I don't know about you, but I walk down the wine aisle and I've, I've spent my whole life in the wine category, um, growing up in a family business that's that's in the wine industry. And I even get overwhelmed by the, the countless bottles um, that present themselves in front of me I, to know what's a good wine, to know what um, is a brand of, of wine that I want to engage with is an extremely difficult task. And so I feel storytelling is just so important to, to build any brand with consumers, but particularly in the wine industry where we have so many stories to tell and it increasingly becomes harder and harder. Uh, you mentioned it before, Rachel, that um, no marketer in, in wine wants to make the label bigger or to have all of this convoluted point of sale that sits around um, the bottles because increasingly we want to make more sustainable executions, but we also want to make sure that we've got premium offers and that consumers feel really good and, and, and confident about the bottles that they're, that they're buying. So back in 2017, um, on the 19 Crimes brand, this incredible brand uh, ha has such a story to tell. Um, not necessarily about the wine per se, but really the, the brand is built on um, the story about the Irish convicts um, being uh, uh, shipped off to Australia um, down here and, and kind of seeing out their years in Australia. And we thought, what? how do we tell this story and how do we really connect with consumers to say this is this is a real story and it's it's really interesting and people really want to connect with it when we have the opportunity to tell them but how do we tell them when they're just seeing the bottle on the shelf um so lo and behold um we we engaged in um augmented reality and this was a real opportunity to um get a real visual marker on the bottle um which was activated by um an app living wine labels and allowed um, consumers, whether they were at shelf or whether it was a bottle that they'd already purchased and had on their um, dinner table, to really engage in the story behind 19 Crimes and really be brought into that world of the brand. And that was a pretty powerful um, step for the wine industry to kind of say, hey, we can actually bring these stories to life for consumers, whether it's at that point of purchase or at the point of consumption, um, where people become quite connected to the brand. Wow, thank you so much for that um, story, Emma. I, I would have never have known walking into the store, that amazing story. And it's definitely one that needs to be told. Um, so I'm glad you guys use the technology to do that. Uh, most recently, we actually worked together, our companies on Devil's Corner from the Brown Family Wine Group. Um, and they're actually known as being one of the first Australian wine companies to use NFC technology on its packaging. How exactly are you using that technology today or how did that come about as well? Yeah, absolutely. So the opportunity on Devil's Corner um, came about in about 2020. Um, we engaged Blue Byte, um, really with the opportunity of how do we engage people in the brand, in the Devil's Corner, which is from um, the southernmost state of Australia, Tasmania, which is quite a, a wild, unknown um, state of Australia, yet alone um, area of the world. How do we engage consumers in, in Tasmania, in Devil's Corner, but also how do we have a really clear, succinct way for people to engage in a consumer promotion? Now, in the past, we've um, executed consumer promotions where, um, as you would have seen, you enter a URL and um, you get presented with, with the site and you can go in and enter. Um, 
people aren't wanting to go through those convoluted steps anymore. People uh, are fast paced. And like you said, they're bombarded with a clutter of messages that you really want to be able to um, really easily and succinctly enter into a promotion, engage with a brand and move on. Um, so we saw the opportunity of, hey, there's there's um, a lot of people using kind of um, tap and go on their credit cards or um, tap and go on their phones. How do we actually use that NFC technology um, for people to engage really easily with brands? Mm -hmm. um, so working with Blue Byte, we actually um, put a little NFC chip under the label on Devil's Corner, allowing people to just simply tap their phone, no app required, which I think is a really key point um, of not having to download a subsequent app um, to engage in the program. NFC allowed us to simply have people tap their phone onto the label and be presented um, with the opportunity to enter this consumer promotion. Now, I don't think this is limited to consumer promotions. Um, it, that was the opportunity that really presented itself at the time. But what it allows us to do is simply have people um, use connected packaging to get an array of content ongoing um, and content that you can forever as a brand owner be changing up and, and keeping refreshed for consumers to continue to, to uh, engage in that story of your brand. And so for, um, for Devil's Corner, we had the opportunity to use um, the NFC technology to enter this promotion. But on the flip side, we also used a QR code. Um, okay. Knowing that NFC, particularly here in Australia, um, is quite new technology and, and the ability to communicate with consumers on how, how to enter um, coupled with a QR code made it a lot easier for people to understand that there's kind of that dual way of entering. Mm -hmm. um, now, I said that, that that was all happening in 2020. Um, we actually got presented um, with the opportunity with QR codes going through the roof, skyrocketing because of COVID, um, that people became a lot more familiar with QR codes and how they um, operated and they became a, a big part of people's everyday life all of a sudden. Um, so we reaped the benefit of that from the QR code point of view, but equally um, saw a really good uptake of the NFC um, tap and go technology as well for that promotion. For sure. I have a question about that. So you said you had QR and NFC. Was the experience different or was it the same for both? It was the same experience. So um, really it was just the engagement mechanic um, that mm -hmm. was different. We have, um, as as you do in the U.S., um, an array of demographics that engage in wine. And we actually saw that um, a slightly older demographic were really comfortable to engage with the QR code, um, mm -hmm. whereas we saw a slightly younger demographic, um, really comfortable with kind of that tap and go um, experience. So really taking us to the same content, um, but two different ways in which the consumer could engage um, and access that promotion. Right. You get that cool factor as a younger person just tapping the... Um the the bottle and seeing that experience pop up on your phone exactly so, and I guess um aesthetically as well like if you yeah. as a brand owner um I, I was quite hesitant to put a QR code on our on our pack and this was for a limited time only to really test the opportunity no one wants to see this big black and white square um QR code on a pack where the NFC really allows you to have a really um hidden um uh opportunity to connect with people. It's really this tiny little button that sits under the label and our, our label supplier, um, CCO, are actually able to really embed that into the label, um, mm -hmm. that you don't have to have this cumbersome um, additional packaging piece um, right. using up your real estate. Yes, and talking about cumbersome QR codes in 2020, I think the evolution of that has actually come so far because we've been able to actually make all these designs within the QR code that makes it even seamless. I think it looks actually nice on the packaging today rather than in 2020 where yeah. we're just slapping QR codes and hoping it works. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Emma, I, I really see you as an innovator in the connecting technology space. Want to really get your advice for your peers on creating a connected technology strategy, what advice would you give, you know, to those listening in on best practices? Yeah, absolutely. I, I You mentioned it earlier, Rachel. I think the key is to really make sure that you've got ongoing engaging content. 
Um, I think as a marketer, you can often see what the benefits are for you and your business um, in having connected packaging and having this, this amazing first party data coming in. But I think what, um, what is really important is being really consumer centric and really thinking, how am I going to be adding value um, to those, those people who are engaging in my packaging and what do they want to know? Um, and I think it presents an opportunity to have kind of evergreen content, continuing to keep that fresh so people want to come back and find out more. And do you think the, the demand on wanting to know sustainability information, ingredient information, sourcing information, there's the wine category um, really has such a wealth of, um, of content that can come to life for the consumer that I think it's how we use that and make it really engaging for people and something that people want to endeavor to, to seek more. Um, so I'd say have a really robust content strategy um, that has a solid plan um, and that you actually think about the pillars of um, that journey that you're taking the consumer on um, and the story that you want, want to tell them. Um, I would also say um, it's really looking at the holy grail of connected packaging. Um, there's three elements. There's that consumer connectivity and that, that ability to um, really engage the consumer. There's the authenticity and traceability piece. Um, more and more people want to know where their products come from, um, but also know that they're the real deal. Um, there's plenty of counterfeit on the market, particularly within the wine um, category and spirits. Um, the, that that authenticity and traceability piece is really key. Um, but lastly, there's that data piece. And so to be able to create a, a connected packaging solution that that gets that holy grail of, of those three pillars um, is just so powerful for a brand. And you think if you can get the consumer really excited and have that evergreen content, you've got that authenticity piece and people feel really confident about what they're buying, but in, in turn, you've got this beautiful first party data that you're able to own as a business um, and equally uh, tailor your content based off the people who are engaging with you and find out so much more about who's actually buying your product and where and how they want to engage. You've got this kind of 360 holy grail that I just think is, um, is so powerful as a brand if you get right. It definitely is amazing to be able to tap into all of those insights. Um, thank you so much, Emma, for sharing your stories and your advice. I have one more question, and that is, what are you planning next? Oh, right, sure. <laughs> we, we, we're always tinkering around with things. Um, uh, for, for our business, um, we've really, we're, we're a family-owned business, and we've been operating for 133 years. And what we've we've really prided ourselves on is making sure that we're uh, innovators into the generations to come. So we're always tinkering around with something new. At the moment, um, we're really looking at how how we continue to tell our stories behind our brands and looking at um, kind of engaging with um, technology bots or I guess um, pre-recording where you can actually kind of have people ask um, questions um, and, and you as a, a brand owner can actually respond in real time. Um, we're doing that rather than kind of the call center, um, kind of a little less personal um, scenario. We're looking at how do the winemakers, how do the family um, really engage with our consumers and people feel really connected with our packaging. We will continue to look into um, NFC. I think NFC is such a beautiful um, technology that will continue to allow us to, like I said, unlock that holy grail and particularly that first party data um, that that is becoming so much harder to obtain as a brand, um, but equally um, be able to tell our stories and really give consumers a whole lot of added value when they're engaging with our brands. Thank you so much, Emma. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us today. Great. Thanks for having me, Rachel. Of course. So now that you've seen how connecting technologies can actually revolutionize your consumer relationships, Let's take a closer look at how this can work for you and your brand. Feel free to take out your cell phones and actually engage with some connecting technology here on the screen by scanning this QR code. By doing this, you can see a customized experience. 
completely customized, being able to tell your unique story, as Emma was just talking about, perhaps at the point of sale, it's the perfect opportunity. Maybe your sales associate is really busy and your consumer really needs some information from your brand. So here is the opportunity for you to give them detailed information on probably your production methods, your vineyard history, your sustainability initiatives. Now, once that same bottle is at home, you can actually change the content based on location. You know the person was in the store, so give them something to educate and incentivize the purchase. Now that they're at home, let's let them learn about food pairings. Maybe they're about to open the bottle of wine and start to cook. Let's tell them about some relevant food pairings or maybe how to host a tasting or maybe other vintages that they may enjoy based on the purchase that they've made. Now, this specific example that you're looking at is with Jack London. And we really worked with them to create a holistic connecting technology strategy. Rather than just using a QR code to go to a static landing page that's not cutting through the digital noise, we create a strategy that actually drove a 10% engagement rate with an average time on page of more than 13 minutes. So with a single scan of a QR code, consumers were transported into the world of Jack London, where they could engage with exclusive content. A part of this experience was a 30 second video showing behind the scenes of making the wine, food pairings, original recipes. You could also get some um, exclusive information like the harvest date, composition, techniques that were used to make the wine. You were also incentivized to sign up for email. So that actually first party data capture. And you were incentivized with a product discount that actually drove more sales. Here's another example of connecting technology. This one is with tuned wines. They really go above and beyond in creating a unique experience for consumers, merging wine and music together. So this is actually with NFC technology, as you can see, it's seamless on the bottle. There isn't that QR code, but once you tap it, you're transported into the world of tuned wines where you have a specific playlist that is curated for you that goes along perfectly with that wine. And this experience, can be changed at any time. And this speaks to the technology, of course, because experiences can be changed based on contextual cues like location, language, time of day, and more. So being able to really provide consumers with the right message at the right time and add value. Perhaps your consumer is really near a cafe that's serving this wine you can tap and see where that cafe is. Maybe it's a shopping center that's selling this wine. You can tap and see where exactly that is. Maybe it's an exclusive release date and more exclusive content that you would like to share. Now, the value of connected products really spans throughout the entirety of the consumer experience. Not only at the point of sale, but well after that consumer has gone home and is actually consuming the wine. You're not only able to add value to the consumer, but you're also able to get actionable insights on consumer preferences, product usage. I remember Emma said, you know, well, we saw that younger people were using the QR code. I'm sorry, the opposite way around. We're seeing that younger people were using the NFC tag versus older people using the QR code. A great example of really being able to see how exactly your consumers are interacting with connecting technology. You can also meet consumers' demand for transparency and sustainability by providing them with these stories from supply chain all the way to end of life. And of course, you spend time to really curate this message so you can deliver it to consumers in a brand owned way so that you regain control of that message. 
And of course, you can turn your product itself into a sales channel where you can encourage upsells or probably give product suggestions based on their purchases or actually get your consumers to reorder the wine with a one-click sales channel. You can finally identify gray market diversion and actually enable authentication to protect consumers and your brand's identity. Now that we've really gone through all of the amazing things that can be accomplished with connected technology, you're probably wondering, okay, great, so how exactly can I do this? On the call here today, I have Kylie Gordon, who's an account manager at Bluebyte, and she's here to give you a brief overview of how Bluebyte makes this really easy for you. Thank you so much, Kylie, for joining. Yeah, of course. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, so basically, the Bluebyte Experience Studio allows brands to create and deliver personalized mobile experiences at scale by using our intuitive brand managed software platform. Um, so basically, we can help you decrease the time commitment that it takes. So typically, a developer would take three to six months to create these new pages. However, with Bluebyte, you can lower this to about four to eight weeks, um, therefore reaching your customers sooner, faster, and easier. Um, you don't need to know how to code to be able to use Bluebyte as well or need to hire a developer since it's an easy-to-use, drag-and-droppable tool. Um, that can be learned as well. Um, and our Blue Byte team is always happy to help if you have any questions that pop up while using the tool. Um, updates can be made in real time using the platform. So then you can also schedule an update. So if you have a sweepstakes that's going off, you can end the sweepstakes so nobody has entered after it's too late, or you can change your messaging based off of, based on the time of year or change the wine pairings and the recipes when the seasons change. Um, we are tech agnostic, so we can integrate with other services to help you provide an all-in-one, easy-to-use platform with everything that you want included. Um, and our measurement tool allows you to analyze who is viewing your site, when and where, and you can easily test what is working and make changes to reach the most number of people with the most engaging and formative experiences possible. Thank you so much, Kylie for this overview. I do have one question and that is, what has have you seen um, really stand out in the past few months to our clients that we are talking to? I think what really sets Blue Byte apart is the easy to use tool that you can go in and change yourself and the ability to create a coupon through the platform as well as create a beautiful experience that really engages customers to continue to want to come back and see more. Thank you so much, Kylie. And thank you again, Emma. We hope that we provided you with a great overview of how you can actually implement a connected product technology strategy, how you can add value to your consumers and strengthen the relationship that you have with them. And not, not only engage them at the point of sale, but throughout the entirety of the product life cycle and also how you can most ultimately increase your sales. We hope you're excited to get started on creating a strategy for your brand. We're here to help you. If you have any questions at all, you can reach me directly at rachel.gray at bluebyte.com or you can visit our website at bluebyte.com on behalf of the entire Blue Byte team, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll be sure to answer them.